Now, when we studied hot electron effect, we very well know that when my drain voltage increases, my VD used to increase. I also had a gate voltage which was very high. Now, when VD increased or VDS increased to be more specific, we know that my E lateral increased because E lateral was VDS by L. Because my E lateral increased, my VD drift velocity increased because VD was mu into E lateral. Because my drift velocity increased, my kinetic energy increased because kinetic energy is rho half m velocity square because my kinetic energy increased my electrons carried a lot of heat or moved with a very high energy they were hot electrons and this electrons moving with very high energy underwent a process called as impact ionization which means that they pass the high energy electrons pass their energy to the electrons enough elect energy to the electrons so that they can move from valence band to conduction band and therefore creating a hole in the valence band or creating an absence of electron in a valence band so an electron hole pair was generated. Hole being a P type will move towards a P substrate in case of an NMOS and will lead to substrate current. However, the electrons might electrons might move towards the oxide if the gate voltage was very high. And we know that gate voltage was very high. I beg your pardon, that was a part of another electric field in MOSFET, which was given by VGS by TOX. So as VGS increased, we know that it used to attract the electrons towards itself some electrons will move there but some electrons will get trapped in the oxide layer this exact phenomena we will try to achieve in floating gate the electrons which were trapped in the oxide right that is what we are trying to understand some electrons will move towards the gate but some electrons might get trapped so when the gate voltage is a very high value and the drain voltage is a very high value we know that hot electron effect will take place or channel hot electron injection will take place which will lead to trapping of some electrons in this poly gate which will leave behind a positive charge here so the next time if i have to turn on the transistor my transistor will require a higher threshold voltage to turn on and this is exactly what we wanted because we wanted to program our device in such a way that my threshold voltage is increased. So what we did in summary was we underwent a hot electron effect for my floating gate where we increase the gate and the drain voltage. Now when we are increasing this gate and the drain voltage in order to trap some charge on my poly gate and the reason why we are doing this is because we wanted to increase the threshold voltage. This voltages are becoming now the programming voltages. So we know that for programming gate voltage should be very high, drain voltage should be very high. They should be in the order of 20 to 25 volts technically now we understood that from the analytical point of view that when charge is present here it will leave behind something now positive and this needs to be overcome by your gate so that the threshold voltage increases let's understand the same mathematically as well so vt we had seen this term here in the previous slide now there's a new term charge on the poly upon cox this charge also because there are electrons is going to be negative so negative negative will become positive so here we know that q poly is increasing charge on the poly is increasing cox is reducing correct cox by 2 so overall my threshold voltage will increase and now i have increased my threshold voltage to such a value that it is greater than vdd that means in an nmos transistor when a gate voltage even vdd is applied it will not not turn on but it will remain off and this is exactly what i wanted electrically programmable rom correct so I wanted to program my ROM electrically with the help of the voltages such that I can turn it on or turn it off the way I want. And I have programmed it in such a way that my threshold voltage is very high. So I can keep it off. Let's understand what I'm talking about. We have already studied no ROM arrays, right? Where this is a pull up, a pseudo circuit, correct? Just take one or two cases here. This was my output. This was your transistors arrays, correct? I have drawn here one part of that row and I have replaced all that four transistors with a floating gate transistor. Some of them are already programmed high. How have we programmed? We had made their gate and drain very, very high and we ensured that that charge was trapped onto the poly gate. And mind you, this charge stays there for long, long time, for a lot of years, the charge can stay there if you don't erase it. So this is programmed in such a way that this transistor has charge trapped. So threshold voltage high, this is this does not have any charge trap. So this operates on normal threshold voltage. So it's low here. That's what I've written. Low is normal threshold voltage. High is high threshold voltage. That means this high ones are the ones which are programmed in that row specifically. So now let's presume that word line goes high. When word line goes high, we know that word line would be equal to VDD. The high transistor has a high threshold voltage. So it does not turn on because it's programmed not to turn on. The low ones will turn on. 
and we know that when the high one does not turn on because of pull up they would have already pre-charged this to vdd right so this will say this is d7 say this is d6 this is d5 so all this are zeros so all of them were initially at logic high correct if this guy turns on then only it will go to low otherwise it will stay to high that's exactly what i'm talking about so d7 will stay to high this is low so the transistor when vl wl equal to vdd it's not programmed this floating gate is not programmed for a higher threshold voltage so this will turn on and it will pull d6 to 0 as i have said here d5 high so it will 1 d4 0 so this is how you program by using the floating gate and the charge stored on the poly gate you ensure that your threshold voltage is greater than vdd and this is how programming happens electrically programmable rom now how does erasing happens in this electrically programmable rom let's understand that quickly